Hi guys, we are in today's fifth and final wedding workflow series. So I'm very, very excited because today we're gonna to be combining so many of the things that I love most, which are getting published and blogging and social media sharing into your workflows. So before we move forward, I just wanna remind anyone if you're stumbling across this video and you haven't watched the other four, go back, watch the four, download the free guide, it's down below, and join us because this is such a cool series and I think that it's gonna help a lot of people. All right, so in video three, we talked about sharing during that golden window, 24 hour period, and about sharing with vendors. So those are the images that we're gonna be talking about today. So not only are you providing vendors with images that they're probably going to share and get you published and featured and lots of link backs to your name, but they're also going to be the same gallery of images that you shared with the vendors. Those are the images that you're going to take and submit. While you shared those images with those vendors, you're also everyone is going to be benefiting because everybody's going to get shared and tagged and you're all going to build each other's audiences up so be sure to include in that email when you first send that vendor email and you say hey we work together at this wedding here are the images let them know your social media handles let them know other people's social media handles and encourage them to share but to credit properly so I like to blog the images from each and every one of my weddings, but I can't always blog the images because sometimes when you submit, you're also required to be exclusive, meaning you can't have the images on another blog, even your personal blog for your business. So depending on whether or not I am submitting to a print publication or a very exclusive blog, I may or may not at this point blog the images. If I do decide to blog the images, I will go ahead and use a program called Blogstomp. Blogstomp allows me to, with literally a click of a button, just combine images side by side or create collages, rename and resize them all at the same time saves you so much time. It's insane. So if you want to see that video, I actually have another video about that showing you a little bit behind the scenes. So I use blog stomp to go ahead and get my images ready to blog. And the great thing about blogging is that you can link all the other vendors. Once you have blogged your images and you've decided what you're going to share and you've credited everyone who contributed to the day, be sure to blast an email to all of those people and say, Hey, you're featured on my blog. I cannot tell you how often I just say, guys, you know what? Like your stuff's on my blog. And then they go and they put it on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all these platforms for free for me. So get that free marketing and go ahead and share that you blogged about those people. They will appreciate it. And at this point, you've done your sneak peeks, you've blogged about it, maybe you've shared a little bit on social media. I will always share uh, something on Instagram. I will even throw some stuff in Instagram stories. Sometimes I show behind the scenes in Snapchat. I'm going to trickle this information a little bit so the images throughout my social media pointing back to my blog for about two weeks. So it's okay if it repeats, especially if you're on Twitter where things recycle very quickly, you can repeat a little bit, but I like to switch up the content. Sometimes it's a link and a quote. Sometimes it's just an image with a link and it says, hey, go check out the rest of this stuff. So as far as social media sharing, be sure to be consistent, keep recycling and stick with stuff. Don't just tweet one time that you have a new blog post or post one Insta story. Chances are the majority of your followers didn't see that because not everybody is on these platforms every single day. So don't be afraid to keep recycling your content and keep sharing and blasting out about it. At this point in my workflow, I'm going to submit the shoot to be featured. So I'm going to go on a site like Two Bright Lights or Top 100 Wedding Blogs and just look and try to find, first and foremost, where I think my images will fit and what blogs are looking for images. So sometimes they'll do calls, like an open call and say, we would love to see a wedding that has Vietnamese tea ceremony, or we'd love to see a wedding that has more reds and jewel tones, that kind of thing. So you can get a good idea of who is interested in your work based on what your work looks like and what blogs are putting out that they would want to see. Websites like Style Me Pretty also have entire blog posts about how to be featured, what they're looking for, what they want to see, and read about your submission that really makes you stand out. So if you're interested in getting featured, check out this video 
and download my submissions checklist because it's at this point in my workflow that I go through that checklist and I decide where it's going to get featured or where at least I'll submit and I'll go forward from there. So you have to be methodical and it has to be a part of your workflow. Otherwise, you probably will never find time to actually submit these things because it does take time. Now that we're at the end of this series, I need something from you guys. I need to hear what else do you need to know about workflows? I know that we kind of brushed through some things really, really quickly. These are my workflows and I'm sure lots of you still have questions. If you have specific questions, I'm going to be answering them in a live wrap up video. Leave me your questions and suggestions for the wrap up pertaining to all things workflow and efficiency. I will absolutely get to it and I can't wait to see you guys there. So be sure to subscribe, like this video, leave your questions and I'll see you guys in the live wrap up. Bye guys.